Good morning. Welcome to our morning minute for this morning. It's Easter weekend, April 2020. Today is Good Friday, of course. Uh, don't be discouraged. I know that things are a little bit out of out of their normal order. We don't get to go to church. We don't get to have uh, physical fellowship with our brother and sister Christians, but this thing is going to come to an end. It's going to get back to normal, and no matter what, the Holy Spirit is fellowshipping with us. I wanted to talk uh, today in the sense of having a little bit of a follow-up to what we talked about yesterday. Remember yesterday when Paul said to the following words, For unto you it is given on behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. <clears throat> We talked about how the suffering of the Christian is, uh, in a sense, a gift. It is granted to us, the text says, to suffer on behalf of Christ. And I wanted to talk just for a moment or two about another aspect to that. Let me ask you a question. Is it uh, unfair or self-interested when Jesus asks us to suffer for his sake? We've come to Jesus for peace, right? We've come for, sal for salvation and safety. And so often, right away, Jesus then says, Yes, you are my adopted child. All the blessings of my salvation are yours. Now I'm going to ask you to, to suffer for me. I wanted to talk about that for a minute because some people might be saying, Well, who is Jesus to promise such blessing and then to make us suffer? And there are two things I wanted to share with you very quickly for your thoughts today. First of all, in this life, you need to know that blessing and suffering are not necessarily opposites. In Christ, suffering becomes blessing. Suffering is so very often a seedbed of Christian growth. That was the case with our Philippian Christians Paul was telling them just a verse or two ago before our passage that as they suffer and as the Spirit enables them to meet that suffering obediently and courageously, they gain assurance that Christ really is at work in them, that they really are his people, and that salvation is truly theirs. And that is the greatest blessing I think that any human being can experience to know that they are God's, that their soul is safe, and that they are heading homeward to be with their God forever. There's no greater joy or source of blessedness than that in this difficult life, to know ultimately that the sufferings of this life have no power to harm us, that we are going home to heaven with Christ. And so there's as that aspect to, to suffering. It is a, a blessing to the people of God. And so when, when Christ calls us to suffering, he knows that his spirit will make suffering a seedbed for our spiritual growth and comfort. But there's a second thing I wanted to talk to you about. Not only does Jesus show his goodness and his faithfulness even in suffering by using suffering to make us grow and bear fruit and become even more blessed in him. There's a second thing we need to remember, and that is that Christ himself is the ultimate example of suffering for the sake of the gospel. It's Jesus, the very one speaking these words through Paul, who has ascended to Calvary and he has suffered the shameful death on the cross for our sin. And we must not forget that the physical death of Christ was really nothing compared to the spiritual sorrow that he suffered. He took upon his shoulders the full weight of God's judgment on account of our sin. He endured that for us, for you and me a trial that human beings could never endure, and if we are in Christ, thank the Lord, we will never have to endure. So Christ could write the authoritative dissertation on suffering 
and the gospel fruit that it brings. You need to understand, Christian, that Jesus approaches your suffering with the wisdom of God himself. He knows the fruit that it's going to bring. He can speak from experience that it will be a blessing to you and a blessing to the gospel. And that's why he says it is a privilege that we are graced not only to believe in Jesus Christ and receive all the blessings of salvation, but also hand in hand to suffer with him and to see our suffering become, as amazing as this is, a fruitful labor for the good of our own soul in Christ and also for the good of believers yet to be who are around us, who will see the grace of God in your suffering and will come to embrace the Jesus that you love so much. There's no unfairness in our suffering. Jesus isn't taking a cheap shot or being deceptive. He is giving you the privilege of laboring with him for the gospel of salvation. A thought for you today. Let's pray that Christ would enable us to fully embrace the wisdom of his purpose in our suffering. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that you are the ultimate sufferer. As Isaiah puts it, you are a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And you know in your divine wisdom and from personal experience that the sufferings of your people, the sufferings of those who are God's children, result in fruitfulness for the gospel, both within ourselves and throughout the whole world. Your cross was the great example of that fruitfulness and the sufferings of your people like sanctified echoes, are likewise examples of how your wisdom turns our suffering into sanctity for us and salvation for the world. We praise you for your wisdom, and we pray that you would enable us to make the very best in the spirit of this difficult hour of our life. Bless this quarantine. Sanctify our loneliness for the glory of Christ in us and in the world. Amen. Praise the Lord for his amazing wisdom. Let that be your thought today. My Savior is wise, and everything I'm experiencing will bless my soul and will be used to bless the souls of others. Thank you for joining me today.